All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and talk about polygons a little bit here and see what they're made of. Because before we can actually jump in here and start working with polygons, we have to actually see what they're made of and how they work. So let's go ahead and hit F12 on my camera viewport here just to uh, go ahead and maximize it. And there's a couple of ways we can create po polygons in XSI. We can create them manually and sketch them out ourselves using our mouse cursor by pointing and clicking, or we can simply create pre-made polygonal objects and primitives. Well, let's look at the first option, then we'll, ta we'll talk about the latter. So, let's go over here under Modify, let's go to Poly Mesh, and the first tool you'll see is Add Edit Polygon Tool, and the shortcut is the N key. Board, uh, the N key. And our cursor changes to kind of like a pencil or a crayon or whatever, and you can come in here and just sketch out and point and click and when you're finished you can just hit the right mouse button and it'll keep you in the tool so you can create new polygons or you can just end it so let's just end it by hitting the right mouse button again and there we go we have created a polygon object to see this a little bit better let's go up here to wireframe and switch from wireframe to hidden line removal mode and I'm gonna hit G on the keyboard to get rid of the grid and uh, actually let's go ahead and switch to shaded view instead might be a little bit easier to see this okay so here we have this uh, polygon object that we just created by pointing and clicking so what makes up polygon objects well just like with anything else in life polygon objects are made out of components so for example people are made out of uh, flesh and bone and organs and things well polygons are made out of a few different components so let's have a look at what these components are this flat area right here that looks uh, kind of like black really dark right here is actually the component of the polygonal object known as a polygon and to be able to select that polygon we can hit a couple of ways there's a couple of ways you can do this in XSI the first shortcut is using the, the Y key and if you use the Y key what it allows you to do is drag a box around the entire polygon to be able to select it now for this to work however your but your box selection your marquee selection has to encompass the entire polygon if you only take up a quarter of the polygon it won't select it so that's how that works if you hit the U key on the keyboard it'll activate what's known as ray casting polygon mode and this mode works a little bit different because in this mode you just click on top of the polygon and selects it you just gotta make sure you're uh, selecting it from the, from the correct side there since I was trying to select it from the back, it didn't want to. It only in ray casting mode, it likes to select it from the front. And right now, it thinks that this is the front of the polygon. And we can actually see that by going up here to our visibility options. And if we turn on polygon normals, and we select that polygon, we can see that the polygon normal is indicated by a blue line. And it's shooting out this way, out here to tell us that that's the way the polygon is facing so that's a polygon right there what other components make up a polygon object well there's something called points you see all these blue edges on the outside over here those blue edges have to connect the points that's just uh, a prerequisite of polygons there has to be points uh, existing in order for these edges to meet up so let's hit T on the keyboard to activate tag point mode and what we can do now is select different points on this polygon. We can select one or two. We can select as many as we want. So it's, it's uh, pretty simple. So these are all the points that make up the polygon. And then if we hit I on the keyboard, you'll activate ray cast mode for edges, which allows you to simply select these edges simply by clicking and dragging over them, almost like painting on top of them. And it'll select those edges. And selected edges become red. All components in XSI that are selected become red. And we can also use the regular edge selection mode, which is with the E key, E for edges. And allows you to just drag select on top of an edge. And unlike the polygon uh, selection mode with the marquee box, you don't have to take up the entire edge inside the marquee box. Whatever this marquee box touches, it selects. So there's all the different edges. Now what would be the point of selecting these components well the point of being able to select these components is to be able to select them 
and move them around, rotate them, and edit them in all kinds of ways. This is where the power of polygon modeling comes into play, because this object here would be pretty useless if we weren't able to edit it. Fortunately, in XSI, we, the whole point of polygon modeling is to take something like this and edit it and turn this thing into pretty much any object we can possibly imagine, from a character to a car to a spaceship to an entire environment or a mountainside or anything we want. So let's have a look at that. If we select this edge by going to edge mode, either by hitting E on the keyboard or I, we can actually select this edge right here. And once we have it selected, we could do a number of transforms. Now over here in the MCP, or the main command panel here on the right, under the transform panel, we have this S for scaling, this R for rotating, and this T, which stands for translating, which basically means moving. And we can use those three different editing modes to move, rotate, and scale our different components. So let's try and see how that works. If we activate uh, translate mode, which means move, we can actually select this edge and then we can move it wherever we want. See that? So we can move it in whatever axis we want, the Z axis, which is the blue arrow, the X axis, which is the red arrow, and the Y axis, which is indicated by a green arrow. So we can move this wherever we please and wherever we want. So we can start to edit this shape out and change the complete shape of this object by modifying its different components like its edges. We can do the same thing as well to say point. So we can go ahead and hit T on the keyboard, tag a couple of points here, then we can activate something like the rotate tool, this R over here, and we can start rotating these different points around and really start to change the shape of this object. We can also select the, the polygon itself. In this case we only have one polygon. But we can take this polygon and we can say, for example, activate the scale tool and we can scale the size of this polygon and edit it any which way we want. So we can scale it, we can rotate it, and we can, of course, move it around. Now, I recommend learning the shortcuts to move, scale, and rotate, which the shortcut for moving is V for Victor on your keyboard by default. I strongly recommend you use the default XSI keyboard commands, especially if you're new to XSI. To rotate, the shortcut is C for Charlie on the keyboard. And the shortcut to scale is X for X-Ray on the keyboard. So those are pretty helpful uh, shortcut keys to remember there. Okay, so that's how we can select the different components. And those are the different components of polygon objects, as well as how to modify them and edit them simply by doing three different types of edits, moving them, rotating them, and scaling them. So if we hit the space bar, we'll automatically jump back to object mode, so we select the object as a whole. And again, we could also take the object as a whole, and we can rotate it, move it, and we can scale it. All right, so let's grab this, uh, this object here. We don't need it anymore, so I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard to get rid of it, and it's gone. Now let's look at the second way of creating polygonal objects. The second way is by going up here to get primitive going down here to polygon mesh and then you have here a whole bunch of different options about a dozen different options here or more for creating pre-made uh, polygonal primitive objects these are known in the 3d world as primitives we have cones we can create cubes cylinders discs and from reading the list you can uh, you can see the different objects we can create so let's just go ahead and for example create a cube by clicking on cube and excess side pulls up a cube primitive object automatically for us so we don't have to build this object from scratch we already have this six-sided uh, cube object now when we create these pre-made objects like this cube for example we get something called a PPG this property page window that opens up here now uh, you can see me dragging it around and it'll have a whole bunch of different information and parameters for this cube for example I have the name which by default is cube but we can call it whatever we want so if I want to call it say super cube or anything like that I can go ahead and rename it now we have some parameters here that we can use to edit this cube right off the bat and get it going we can change the length parameter which basically changes the scaling of the cube so by default it's set to eight units in the width in the height and the depth and we can actually change that 
uh, to any pretty much any number we want. And even when we reach the end of the slider, we can still overdrive this by going into the numerical field and typing in a higher number, like say 100, and it'll blow up to 100 units. So let me just put it back to the default. And we have a few different options here, like we could change the subdivision rule, but we're not going to talk about subdivisions now. And then we have down here our geometry options, which allows us to change the number of subdivisions in the U, the V, and the base. So the U is basically the width here, the V is the height, and the base is the depth. So we can add more subdivisions and things to make this into a more complex object which you can see here now because it's more complex now I have more uh, I have more components to edit which means that I can create more complex shapes out of this simple cube so this cube can go from being a simple little cube that can be used to make the tabletop of a desk to suddenly creating complex characters with arms and tentacles and heads and teeth and everything so this complexity gives us more leeway, more uh, freedom to create more complex objects. And now that I have all these complex objects, I can go to say, I can hit U on my keyboard to switch to ray casting mode here for polygons. And I can select multiple polygons and things and just come in here and start editing and moving these things around like this and totally changing the shape of this and making it look like something completely different from a cube. Now, one other thing that you want to keep in mind is that we can hit shift and enter. And when we hit shift and enter, we open up an info selection uh, window. And this window gives us some information, some detailed information about our cube object here. Besides the name, it'll tell us what type of an object it is. In this case, it'll say poly MSH, which means poly mesh, which basically tells us it's a polygonal object. So it's uh, from the family of 3D objects. And then it'll tell us the components. This cube right now is, is comprised of 152 points, also known as vertices, 300 edges, and 150 faces. And it's, when it says faces, it's referring to the individual polygons inside of this polygonal object. So basically, each one of these little squares is a face. So you'll see that a lot. You'll see polygons referred to as faces. Sometimes you'll see points referred to as vertices. So keep that in mind. Points and vertices are the same thing. And faces and polygons are the same thing to each other. And then under polygons, it'll tell you what kind of polygons you have. So you can have triangles. You can have quads, which are quadrangles. And you can have something called n-gons, which are polygons that have more than four sides. So triangles are all the shapes that have uh, three sides. So let me show you how that works. Let me hit OK over here to get out of that window. And what I'm going to do is with this object selected, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to Modify, Poly Mesh. And I'm going to go to Add Edge Tool. And when this point right here turns red and highlights, I'm going to click once. Then I'm going to go down to this point. When it highlights, I'm going to click again. And that's going to form a couple of triangles because you can see if I go to polygon mode by hitting U on the keyboard, I have a triangle here. This is comprised of three sides. See, here's one, two, and three. It's a three-sided polygon which automatically makes it a triangle. That's why it has three sides. It's called a triangle. So when I select this object and I hit Shift Enter, now you'll see that it'll tell me from the polygons that I have, I have two triangles. 149 quadrangles, quads for short, basically 149 four-sided polygons, and I have zero polygons with five or more points, also known as n-gons. So that's kind of important to know and to, to be aware of. All right, so it, right here it's telling me uh, if it breaks down everything to triangles, there's actually 300 triangles in this, and I know it can be kind of confusing. What this is basically saying is that at the most basic form, this thing is actually comprised of 300 triangles. If you break everything down to the lowest possible size polygon, which is a triangle, because you can't have a polygon that's less than three sides, it's uh, impossible. So basically, all these objects can be broken down to uh, 
basically a minimum of 300 triangles. And why would it say this? Well, it's important to know because if you're working with something like uh, real-time graphics, like video game development, a lot of game engines won't count n-guns, they won't count quads, they'll only count triangles. Now, not all game engines do this, but a lot of them do, at least most of the ones I've worked with do. So, uh, being able to quickly see the number of triangles is very important because you can say, okay, our game engine requires that our character have a max uh, triangle count of, say, 2,000 or 5,000 triangles. Uh, for the for the first level of detail version of the character of the main character of the game so you can quickly see here okay I'm at 300 triangles so I still have some uh, I still have a whole bunch of triangles that I can get to before I get to 5,000 this will also tell you some other information like the volume the surface area and a whole bunch of other stuff so let's hit okay to get out of that so that's basically real quick in a nutshell what a polygon is what a polygonal object is uh, what makes up a polygonal object, what components make up a poly polygonal object, and how to check some information on it, and how to go ahead and select the different components and edit them around a little bit. So I'm going to end this video here, and I'm not even going to save this out or anything. This was just to, uh, to get this point across to you. And in the next video, we're going to start talking about how to edit this stuff and the basics of editing and what menus and little context menus we can use to edit things quickly and easily.